It's Radio Ridley Radio with your host, Michael Ridley. <laughs> Gotta scoot your boot while you boot your scoot. You better scoot your boot while you're booting your scoot. Hey, what's up? It's uh, Radio Ridley Radio. You're listening. That's, yeah, that's oh, fucking Christ. What are you, like four seconds in the episode? Already fucking <laughs> short circuit. Already fucking goofed up. <laughs> Good golly gosh. Hey, what's up? You guys are listening to Radio Ridley Radio. I'm your host, Michael Ridley. Today is March 17th. It's 6.01 p.m. Central Standard Time in the great town of Austin, Texas. Uh, Feeling good, dude. Uh, Right now we are on one 12-ounce Red Bull coconut flavored. I had 12 feet of, no, no, no. I had six feet of fruit by the foot. What else did we have? I had one Alpha Brain blackberry lemonade packet and two alpha brain pills and totally clapped taylor's cheeks and mario kart before we started this episode that's the only reason you wanted to play so <laughs> yeah. talk shit yeah that's the kind of guy i am i will practice something for weeks to just casually like bring it up in conversation to totally smoke you and be like wow dude you're not you're not good at this at all wow it's all good we're gonna start we're gonna mario kart's gonna be a new ritual yeah in this house this is a Mario Kart heart. <laughs> this is a Mario Kart house, god damn it. All right? Son, you will play Mario Kart before the pod, god damn it. I don't give a fuck about your goddamn grades. <laughs> it's just a toxic Mario Kart dad. That's wouldn't funny. that be the coolest wouldn't that be the coolest dad ever? Yeah, he's like you guys you spend most of your childhood traveling the country playing Mario Kart, <laughs> getting emotionally abused by your like fucking football coach dad, but it's Mario Kart. We've been playing Mario Kart in this family for generations. Yeah. Turn the goddamn assisted steer off. I didn't raise a pussy. <laughs> okay. Are you going to build for speed or are you building for agility? All right, what are you, you going to run? What are you going to run? A light cart that can steer? Or are you just going to power through everybody with speed? It's up to you, son. These are the decisions we need to make. All right? We're going to state. <laughs> it's All like- right? <laughs> you and your brother? I don't give a fuck about your grades. All right? Two words, Mario Kart. <laughs> We're a family of winners. You want to fucking, you want to cry? Go play Animal Crossing with your fucking sister. <laughs> We're men. We play Mario Kart like grown fucking men. You got a dick and balls between your legs, boy? Pick up that fucking Joy-Con and stop crying. <laughs> It's like Tiger Woods. I don't want to play yeah, Mario Serena, Kart anymore, Venus dad. and Serena Williams, but it's a Mario Kart, Dad. <laughs> I don't want to play Mario Kart anymore, Dad. I'll let you know when we're done. <laughs> My thumbs hurt. I want 60 points across the board. I'm talking all Grand Prix, all maps, even the DLCs. No fucking exceptions. You like? They're like crying. They're like crying in bed and shit, and they're just like. I, I don't know how to get through them, Sharon. I don't know how to get to them. Well, you're you're doing you're doing fine, Greg. You're a good father. <laughs> These boys, they need that. They need that in their lives. They live a they're living a fucking nightmare. Just a Mario Kart nightmare. That's so funny. <laughs> just a rageaholic sports dad, but it's just something as dumb as fucking Mario Kart. Mario Kart, dude. Yes, maintain second place. Why do we maintain second place for the majority of the race? I to a blue fucking shell. <laughs> How many times do I have to tell you this? Blue fucking shell. I don't give a fuck if you can hold first. If it's the last lap, we're staying in second place. It's strategy. Of course it is. What are you, a fucking smooth brain? Whose son are you? Whose son are you? Greg Fitzsimmons. Wait, no. That's a comic. I'm trying to think of somebody who's not real. Whose son are you? That's the family these guys grew up in. Yeah. Super Mario Kart championships. Yeah, it's these kids. Look at those dead eyes. They all have dead eyes. That's sick, though. Trophies. We're going to put plaques on these walls. Yeah. (laughs) The UK and Ireland talent was playing classic Super Mario Mario Kart competitively. British guy. And Take my like, purple shell. He's like, my virginity is trapped inside of this trophy. <laughs> Help me free it, bruv. 
<laughs> There's a belt, dude. Get no pussy in it. Hell yeah, Yo, dude. you can buy one of these. Oh, oh yeah, what? It's only 170 bucks, dude. Oh yeah, after the after the um. I'm gonna suggest to Hassan that we do a Mario Kart at Mothership, and I'm fucking smoking everyone, dude. Call me Snoop Dogg, cause I'm smoking all you. Smoking all you sons of guns, dude. <laughs> yeah, it's it's a kid's game, but you can play it like an adult, and that's for sure. <laughs> It's a boy's game, but I play it like a man. I do not fuck around with the MK8, son. It's not. I'm not. I'm not good at many things in this life. All right, but Mario Kart is one of them. I'm gonna tell you right now, I'm a killer, dude. I implore any of you, pull up. I got the switch in my bag right now, dude. Twenty dollar buy-in. Yeah, we play for pinks around here. <laughs> we play for pinks. Yeah, you lose, I'm taking your switch. It's my switch now. <laughs> Crazy. That's crazy, That'd dude. Crazy. It's like, yeah, how much you want to bet? Oh, yeah, I bet the whole setup. That's mine. It's an OLED switch. I can't lose this. My grandma got me this for Christmas. Oh, I know. <laughs> Soon your grandma will be my grandma. <laughs> Everyone's grandma will be my grandma. <laughs> Everyone's grandma gets them a switch for Christmas. Those are the rules. Those are the rules of the universe, the world that we live in. I'm the most ruthless Mario Kart player in Austin, Texas. And I will take your switch from you. I play for pinks. <laughs> Get the fuck out of here, yeah. dude. Oh, you want to go against me in Mario Kart? <laughs> I play for your pinks. Yeah, buddy. <laughs> like, what? Let's up the ante a little bit. You lose. I get your switch. You win. You get my girl. My wife's like, like what, what the fuck? What is this Need for Speed Unleashed? Like, <laughs> yeah, it's fucking it's fucking Fast and Furious, but it's Mario Kart dudes. <laughs> fucking Vin Diesel's there officiating the event. Hey. <laughs> you know, when that blue shell. <laughs> you gotta watch out for that blue shell. This is, I don't know how Vin Diesel's voice sounds. I don't either, I can't think about it. Smoke him. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's pretty much like. Smoke him. He just speaks in one. In, in in phrases, he doesn't have like full sentences. It's fucking, yeah, dude. We lost my boy. I lost my boy Brian to a tragic Mario Kart accident. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he was a. Uh, he was on two hundred CCs on uh, Sherbert Land, and uh, the tires they were dry rotted. And he came into a curve and just totally got smacked by a blue blue shell and yeah he got hit with a red shell and he died tragically in a fucking Mario Kart racing accident <laughs> <laughs> fucking what's his name what the fuck is that dude's name from Fast and Furious that oh, died I don't know. what the fuck is his name he's Brian he's Brian and Fast and I Furious I never watched those movies really fucking maybe the first one the comment the section one. whoever's listening is raging fast, right now furious. what's the guy's name I'm just. Yeah, I, I can do this. You know, you know when you know when you like forget things to remember new shit. I've done that ever since I've gotten super good at memorizing my material and what I do on stage. I've been letting go of so much random shit that I hold on to. Are you talking about Paul Walker's character? Paul fucking Walker. Dude. Or just the the Paul actor. Walker Brian. Oh Brian. Is Paul Walker plays Brian in Fast and Furious. Okay. The, the bit was that <laughs> Paul Walker <laughs> died in a Mario Kart racing accident <laughs> because he was on Sherbert Land. Uh, on 200 cc with dry rotted tires and got absolutely smacked by by red shell, and uh, took a Gen One Wemo to the face <laughs> <laughs> without the motion sense. Just fucking <laughs> yeah, dude. No risk. No risk. Yeah, they unzip they unzip his body bag and he's just got a fucking Wemo in his forehead. <laughs> it's just Paul Walker with a Wemo in his forehead. Just it's been a long day. Without you, my friend. <laughs> and I'll tell you all about it when I see you again. Just dead ass Paul Walker. Just <laughs> <laughs> they zip him back up. Oh. Everybody got so sad about Paul Walker. Like, like I we- wasn't really like a huge Paul Walker fan. I'm a huge car guy, but like the way that people simp over Paul Walker was so fucking cringe. Yeah. <laughs> it's kind of like, fellas, is it gay to cry over Paul Walker's death? Yeah, super gay. Get over it. You're crying over another man, dude. <laughs> the only person it was appropriate to cry over when they died was Dale Earnhardt because he was an actual race car driver. 
Paul Walker was just like a he was a car guy. Honestly, the way that Paul Walker died kind of proved that he wasn't as much of a car guy. <laughs> uh, <laughs> he thought he was. That's he. So he's driving a Porsche with, uh, I think it was, yeah, the nine. I think it was the nine. Uh, I don't know what the Porsche numbers are, but it's it, dude. It is the most dangerous Porsche they make. Mm. To be fair, it is the the way Paul Walker died. It is the most dangerous Porsche they make. There's no traction control. There's no stability control. There's no fucking ABS. It's just a, like, 700 horse. Look up the car that he died in. Dude, it's so fast, and it has no assists. So the way that we were playing Mario Kart is very similar to how he died because we didn't have steering assist on. We didn't have any of the – we were just bare bones. You can fall off the edge. That's how I play Mario Kart. I don't know play with any of the pussy shit. That one. The Porsche Carrera GT. It is so incredibly dangerous. It's so dangerous. And I think – Look it up. Look up how he died. Oh, oh, goodness gracious! Mechanical failure behind Paul Walker. And I think, um, look up the car that Ryan Dunn died in. Ryan Dunn. I was gonna say he did. He did. Ryan, Ryan Dunn, Dunn, Dunn died in a Porsche too. I I think that um, I think what I heard about that is that the tires were dry rotted on that. Oh, uh, he he died in a fucking. That looks like a nine eleven or something. I don't know Porsches. Whoa. Brutal, dude. He was cool, man. Ryan Dunn made jackass. He was dude. the coolest. Ryan Dunn was my favorite. Was my favorite. Imagine being Bam and like you tortured him for so long and then you just feel like shit now. Yeah, that's kind of re- that's kind of like the reason why. So Ryan Dunn crashed his drunk and then Paul Walker I think had um Paul Walker had dry rotted tires on that thing. That car had been in storage for a long time. And there's something about tires. You got to keep them fresh. Guys, mm. get your tires changed out. Speaking of which, I have bald tires on the truck. I need to change mine, too. Yeah, let's get tires. Let's get our tires changed let's so we tires. don't end up like Paul Walker. Hey, tire. Uh, hey, Taylor. Uh, uh, hey, tires. <laughs> Do you want to get new tailors on it's your- It's me, Tire Taylor. Hey. Hey, what's going on, man? Welcome to Tire Taylor's t- 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 Tire Eporium. We got fucking all kinds of tires. We got old tires. We got used tires. We got brand new tires. We got big ones. We got little ones. We got- Everything but bald tires. Everything but bald tires. That's crazy. Yeah, don't die, guys. Drive safe. Speaking of which, God. Austin Drivers. About six days ago. Here, pull this up. Go to Ramble and First. Look that up on Google. Ramble and First on Google Maps real quick. I was driving to Joe Rogan's Comedy Club last Monday after work. And this feller and I got in a little bit of a road rage situation. And um, on this right here, at Ramblin' first, yep. And he followed me. Ramblin' and first, he followed me. Keep going. Scroll up. Yep, go north. We were going north on Fourth Street. God, look, keep going, keep going. This guy was blocking me, and blocking me, and brake checking me, and blocking me. <coughs> And he had told me that I was speeding, and he cussed me out. He said, slow down, you son of a bitch. We were, like, right next to each other at a light. And he goes, slow down, you stupid son of a bitch. You're fucking speeding. You're fucking speeding. All right, sorry, officer. I don't fucking know. Yeah, are you still on first? Yeah, keep going. This whole time he just, <laughs> fu- dude, this is crazy how long of this, how long of a situation this was. He followed you all the way to Pre- Um, Hit directions. Just tell so, me where it's at. No, no, no. Hit directions. <laughs> All right. Switch. Ch- change. Yeah. Hit flip. All right. Now type in uh, First Street in Old Torf. How many miles is that? Is that fucking three and a, almost three and a half miles? Two, 2.4 miles. Two and a half miles. Yeah, so this guy is fucking like... Getting in front of me, brake checking me. I try to pass. He gets in that lane, brake checks me again. I'm not even speeding. I'm going like 40. It's a 35 on first for most part. This dude was pissed. He was so pissed. <laughs> this dude was pissed off. He was so mad, dude. Yeah, that's crazy now that I look at it on a map. So for like 2.4 miles, and there's red lights all throughout this thing. So I'm just like constantly like this dude is. <laughs> I was not scared at all. It was cool. You had your hand on your oozinator? <coughs> 
Oh, dude, I wish I had a. I usually keep a thing of golf balls in my. <laughs> <laughs> I keep a. I think I I keep a. They're my little. They're my little green shells. I like to play Mario Kart in real life with golf balls. That's highly illegal. Yeah, well, you know, this is a, uh, this is a, uh, all this is fiction. This it's is a fictional, fictional podcast. podcast. This isn't real. <clears throat> but, you know, somebody could totally just keep golf balls in their car anytime they have, like, an unreasonable driver, <laughs> like, pretty much harassing them on the street, you know, and you just take one of those golf balls and... Chuck it out the window. Just get in front of him and chuck a couple see of those golf balls. See what happens. Ooh, whoops. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> I threw a golf ball out the window. <laughs> yeah, yeah, these are my golf balls. <laughs> these are my self-defense golf balls. I need to buy a fucking gun. Dude. I need a gun. I need a fucking bazooka. I need a, a button in my car that releases spikes. I need a James Bond. <laughs> I need to take my truck to the James Bond motherfuckers, and I need it fitted with... Laser beams and Gatling guns. Turrets and, under the headlights. And I need a chain link fence as a windshield. And I need spikes on the side of my wheels. And I need a fucking, I need a, I need a Muslim in the back with a fucking Gatling gun in the bed of my truck. And we just do, 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 do. I just need, I need my vehicle outfitted with weaponry for these Austin drivers. <laughs> Yeah, I need that. <laughs> Mr. Bond. I'm like, oh, thank you so much, dude. Chinese, Asian. <laughs> Asian James Bond. Oh, wow. Thank you so much. Oh, this the button for the rocket launcher. <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, so now when I cut off black guy, I shoot him with a rocket launcher. <laughs> Double O saving. Double O. Shaking, not stirred. Shaking, not stirred. I cut you off, I blow you up. <laughs> Go back to the map. Go back to the map. All right, now zoom in on Old Torf. Get there. All right. This whole road rage situation lasts till we get to about right there. And he gets out at the intersection. He's in front of me, and we're in the far left lane. We're in the far left lane that goes straight. There's a right turn lane, and then there's another lane next to us that goes straight. And then there's a left turn lane. So you, so you got two lanes that go this way. You got two lanes that go straight. We're in gridlock traffic. Gridlock traffic. This motherfucker is in front. This motherfucker is in front of me. I'm behind him at this light. He hops out. Radio Ridley Radio. You heard it here first. This motherfucker hops out of his truck, starts walking up to me. It is a 79-year-old Willie Nelson-looking Vietnam veteran with one arm in a tie-dye <laughs> T-shirt. Hand to God, this is a true story. And I didn't know whether to laugh or just be extremely nervous because this dude could have easily had a gun. And I don't think he did. And I'll never forget what he's driving, too. He's driving a 2004 Ford F-250, and the entire paint job was rhino-lined. Google what that looks like. I was trying to find an old guy with one arm. Google what a rhino-lined truck looks like. It's like a bed liner. He has... He has the car that I was just describing. His car looks like it's made for battle. And it's got battle scars all over it. His tailgate's bashed in. His rear bumper's smashed in. Yeah. See that? See how it's all hard? It's like made out of like... His car is made out of like Yeti cooler material. <coughs> He's driving a fucking 2004 Ford Yeti cooler. <laughs> with dents all over it. I'll never forget, dude... I'll never, if I run into him again, dude, oh, it's on sight. I'm going to take his other arm. He's going to be armless. And he will, I will make him armless. I will disarm him. I will disarm him, make him armless, which will in turn make him harmless because he won't be able to drive like that anymore. Crazy motherfucker. I'll see him out there two weeks later. <laughs> Biting, staring low with his teeth. All right, slow down, motherfucker. Crazy, dude. Crazy. He'll be at the gym like this. <laughs> <laughs> he gets out. He gets out of the truck, walks this? up to me. In my dri I'm in my driver's seat. He walks up to me, and, and I have my window down still. He walks up to me, and he's like, You shut fuck down. You're going 70 miles an hour. I was like, I'm going back. I was going 40. I was going 40. Get back in your truck, dude. This is crazy. What are you doing right now? This is crazy. 
Get back in your truck. Get back in your truck. It doesn't matter how fast I was going. You need to get back in your truck. And I was going 40. This is crazy. He gets back in his truck. He gets out of his truck one more time. I get out. I'm pissed now. <laughs> at the top of my lungs. I can see everybody staring at us. We're in gridlock traffic. Everyone's staring at us. There's a kid and his mom in a Subaru out back to the left of us. And I'm like, am I crazy? And they're like, no, you're good. You're good. I go, I'm good? Okay, watch this. <laughs> I'm about to not be good. I get out as he's walking up to me again. I get out of the truck and I go, get back in your truck, you one-armed faggot. <laughs> it's the only thing. I swear to God, he's not even gay. He's not even a gay dude. This is like old Willie Nelson, like Vietnam veteran. Dude. Yeah, but with Willie Nelson's hair and a tie-dye t-shirt. Swear to God. And that hat. Every time I see that hat and somebody has a problem with me, they're wearing that hat. And I'm like, God damn it. You're just having flashbacks. I just look like a kid in the bushes to you, bro. You're not even like here. You're dissociating. You're having a war flashback. You can hear fucking fortunate son playing in your head. And everything's in black and white, and I have a little hat on. I have mud on my face. I have a hat on. I'm like, what's going on, sir? And he's like, you need to slow down. You need to slow down. I'm like, what the hell going on? I'm not even Vietnamese. <laughs> in his mind, that's how I'm talking to him. I'm like, I was going 40 miles an hour. What the hell going on? Ah. Ah. He just comes back with a live hand grenade. Like, ah. blows his other arm off. <laughs> <laughs> just fucking blood everywhere. But yeah, dude. So he just drove away? No, he gets in his truck. It gets worse, brother. He gets back in his truck, puts it in reverse. Oh, shit. Like he's going to bash into my car. And then it starts making sense that this guy, this is what this guy does for a living. We need to take care of our vets, folks. This is an episode. We need to support the troops. We need to take care of our disabled veterans, man. This guy's out here seeing old little old chinky sweat living his life. Zooming in his cool little truck, and this guy's just mad at the world because I got both arms and a way nicer truck. <laughs> Hair flowing in the wind. Not a care in the world about to go to Joe Rogan's comedy mothership and do a little open mic set crush real quick. And did we mention you got both your arms? Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> I do have both my arms. One to hold the mic and the other one to flip the crowd off with. Mm -hmm. You already know. This guy's mad. I got it. I got it made. This guy is committing insurance fraud. That's how he gets his money, dude. <laughs> this guy is trying to commit insurance fraud, and this is how I know. I get out of my car because I'm like, fuck it. I'm not going to be in my car. My car's, you know, I'm not going to have the airbags deploy in my face. That's what my thought is. I'll just hop on the sidewalk and let them destroy my truck. I need to do comedy. Yeah. Fuck my truck, you know. If I get fucked up, if I get airbags to the face, I might not be able to do comedy for a couple days. Fuck. All right. Well, we're going to get it on camera. I pull the camera out, and I fucking, I go, to, I, I have a camera app in the bottom left corner of my screen. I go to fucking click it. This guy has taken a, a red on right from that furthest left lane. Mm -hmm. Super illegal. While the green light's going, cr traffic's crossing. He it's grunts. like, I'm getting out of here. Yeah, I'm getting out of here. Because he knew the jig was up. And he's been rear-ended before. You could see it in his car. Tailgate smashed in. Mm. Rear bumper smashed in. And I don't know if you guys know this, but in the state of Texas, it doesn't matter. It does not matter. Whoever hits you in the rear is at fault. So he was going to back into my car, call the cops, and say that I rear-ended him. Mm. That's why he was brake-checking me for those two and a half miles. He knew that the jig was up. I'm like, I'm not fucking retarded, dude. I, I, I work with, you know, I've, some, work in, some, I've worked in collision for a long time. <laughs> I worked in collision. Again. I worked in collision for a long time, buddy. I fucking, I know the little tricks of the trade. I'll tell you that, okay? I know the little, you're, you're fucking with the wrong one, dude. Ain't a body shop, it's a fraudy shop. We all know it. Come on down to Taylor Tires. <laughs> we'll take the insurance money and barely fix your car. Put a four, put four inches of Bondo on it. Sorry, I'm making your business so uh, illegitimate. Fraudulent. Making your business so <laughs> fraudulent and illegitimate. I'm sorry, Taylor. That's good. All right, we're just going to bill the insurance. It's all good. Yeah, we're just going to bill insurance. It'll be all right. Yeah. That's a, that, But that's the thing. And then I was on Instagram, and I was like, fuck. I saw a video of couples doing that. People do that all the time. People do that. Insurance fraud, that's like mm -hmm. their – they get that fucking three or four grand. 
wait two weeks, get three or four grand. You really national treasured him finding out that he's like insurance fraud. Like you reverse engineered that. You were like, he's crazy. His car, it's bumpy. It's it's dented. Yeah, yeah. His car's his he's car's reversing d- into me. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Insurance yeah. fraud. Yeah, this is an insurance fraud thing. Well, he has one arm, so he's not working. Mm. He can't work. Right. He's probably getting disability, so he's a leech. Yeah. He's a leech. You know, he got chewed up and spit out by the U.S. government. We got to take care of our vets, folks. They're out here committing insurance fraud. <laughs> he's just fucking bumping into rich tech bros all day long. He probably what the d- hell? He probably, he probably did that to like three or four Teslas that month. You know what I mean? And he's, he's looking for an aggressive driver that he can troll into. And I guess I'm an aggressive driver because I, I get to where the fuck I'm going. I pass people. I fucking... Anyone who anyone who has no patience with driving would be like, yo, this guy's getting it. Like, we're getting there safe, but I'm like, I'm not bullshitting. I pass people. I go around them. I fucking always you go about drive, 10. Drive, always go about 10 crazy. over. Taylor, shut the fuck up, dude. You drive like a <laughs> fucking pussy from Portland. God damn it. You drive so horribly, dude. You drive like a fucking 70-year-old woman. That's not true. Yeah. You sh- All right, it's I'm somewhere sh- in between. You're trying to shit on my drive. I'm like, do not. No, dude, because you are the opposite of the spectrum, dude. You are the... You're the person I'm rear-ending. You're the person. You're the person getting bazooka'd. If I had all this, dude, you drive so safe. It's crazy. You gotta have a little. Well, bit I of get. Day. I was get made fun of and shit on by my friends for driving crazy. Really? Yeah, because they're a bunch of pussies. So like, whoa, dude, you didn't even use a turn signal. We're gonna die. We got a maniac behind the wheel. Is that your buddies? <laughs> Taylor. Yeah. Whoa, we've got a crazy guy on the loose. Whoa, man. What's what's the rush speed racer? Fuck you. We're, I'm trying Dude, to get the there. The speed limits in Oregon on the highway is like 55, bro. That's how it is in Virginia. And, it's like, and my driving they're record pu- they're pussies. sucks. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I and, and I get come, it. They come out here and they're like everybody drives like you. <laughs> no, <laughs> they're like everybody drives fast and stupid like you. Me? No, yeah. like me. Oh, <laughs> they say like that about you. me. Oh, yeah. I drive fast and smart. I think it's possible to drive fast and smart because I mean. That's the thing, though. In Austin, they're either driving too slow or they're driving too fast. We've talked about this before. And I know when to drive slow and I know when to drive fast. It's just I just, it's just it's baseline intelligence. Don't go. I was driving here. This guy was going 25 and he was looking for a turn. Oh, yeah. And he would just brake for every intersection. <laughs> he was, like, slowing down, holding his brakes, reading the sign, and then would continue. And then there was, like, he was even doing it to driveways. Like, you know, all the houses on the way up here? Mm-hmm. He's doing it to drive. I'm like, dude, you don't even know where the fuck you're going. Yeah. And it's, a, and it's a two-way, and I can't pass him. It's a two-way solid line. And I'm just like, just a few more seconds. We're at the studio, dude. Just Everything definitely moves a little slower here. It yeah. Moves like at freeway a, rules. A snail's place. Yeah. Freeway rules, though. I like the freeway at, like, 2 in the morning here. No cops. You go as fast as you want. And it's yeah. like that in Virginia, but there's cops everywhere. And they're like, hey. Yeah, and they're horny as fuck. They're just sitting in their cars, tugging on their cocks with that little gun out. <laughs> I'm gonna get mm, you, dude. Fuck. Yeah, hit over six. Hit you. over sixty-five. I dare dude, you. I'm gonna bust in your asshole, and I'm taking you to the court, dude. Pops a hot load and spits co- spills coffee everywhere and turns the sirens on. Oh shit! <laughs> like <laughs> shoot, <laughs> shoots a hole through the roof of his car with his he, he jacks and shoots a hole straight through the siren, <laughs> turns it on. <laughs> wee, 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 wee. Hey, do you know how quiet, you know how fast you're going, boy? Why are you so sweaty, officer? Also, why do you have one arm? <laughs> <laughs> that guy was just why like... Why are you wearing a tie-dye t-shirt? Yeah, that guy was just playing cops. In his yeah. mind, he was just fucking ripped on fentanyl, fucking <laughs> driving his Mad Max F-250. <laughs> his Mad fu- Max edition. Yeah, his fucking, his Eddie Bauer X, <laughs> Eddie Bauer Mad Max collab. 04 F250 with a Rhino line paint job. And if he cr- if he is bumping into tech bros, it's funny because those guys don't want any, any conflicts. Smoke. So but like if corporate finds out about this, I'm fucked. If yeah. this guy put t- t- just please take my information and just call my insurance. Even though the Tesla is like the ultimate dude, Tesla is in your pocket, dude. It'll either snitch on you or you fucking you're in the clear. Yeah, like 17 cameras on a Tesla. I want to get drag my nuts on a Tesla and the fucking's like you could see the. The, the iPad and the dash is like recording is started. Yeah. Like I was walking up to a Tesla that was parked next to my car and I saw the dash light up like recording has started. Oh, yeah. And I'm like, that's gangster. But I do think like all these new cars and all the fancy shit that comes on them, dude, put a fucking dash cam in the front and the back just so we can cut out. And f- f- that's the thing, though. It benefits insurance rates. It benefits insurance companies to just jack up the prices whenever they want. If we had cameras that prove that we're not at fault all the time, 
or if we had mm. cameras that prove that people who drive like me aren't dangerous, then that would break their whole format of, hey, put this, put this smart drive in your car. Put this thing in your car that tells us how fast you, you drive, and we'll charge you based on that. Yeah. And then you have a bunch of people in Austin who just can't afford their car insurance, and they have those things plugged in their car, so they, they can't go one jism over the speed limit. <laughs> they can't go one over the speed limit one, one come come drop you, you go 61 and a 60 and now all states like yeah i need a 400 a month yeah. oh state minimums just went up dude my insurance is fucking through the roof flow from progressive is licking her child yeah i want to fucking tr- i want to tie her to a truck <laughs> flow from progressive oh well, don't get me started with these insurance companies dude they spent i've worked in that industry for so long <clears throat> They spend all this money on these on these stupid ass commercials. But when it comes down to you crashing your car, listeners of Radio Ridley Radio, when you crash your car, they don't want to pay the body shop to fix your car at all, dude. They'd much rather keep cranking out those stupid ass gecko commercials. Those CGI gecko commercials are probably so expensive. Flow, all those outfit costume changes and the sets and all that shit. It's like, bro. I don't give a fuck about the commercial, dude. That's the thing is the consumer, that's what they think of us. That's what the insurance companies think of us. <laughs> funny commercial. <laughs> I'll switch to progressive. They have funny commercial. Meanwhile, they're like barely giving the shop enough money to properly fix your car. And then it looks fine. And then you leave the shop and you're driving basically a ticking time bomb that looks okay. It looks fine. It looks like it's been fixed. But I'm not speaking for the shops I've worked for, but I just know the industry. I wouldn't want my shit getting worked on nowhere in Austin, Texas, dude. All the body shops in Austin, Texas are like outdoor shops. It's like some Mexican dudes with an angle grinder like in a field. Like, <laughs> like cars getting painted outside and shit. That's crazy to me. Dude. I'll drive by some of these body shops. I'm like, dude, the lot is all mud. <laughs> like, what the <laughs> fuck? It's all dirt. Like, the lot is dirt. It's like a fucking trailer and then just a two, like a two car garage. And they're like, yeah, bring progressive. We'll do. See, we can feast progressive. <laughs> the progressive has those one commercials. I don't know if you've seen them or not, but it's with the flow chick. And then it's like her and her bitch sister. And her her sister's like she's like trying to get insurance for her sister, and her sister's like always dumb and breaking shit, and it's just her with like a blonde wig on. Yeah. <laughs> so fucking dude, <laughs> comedic geniuses over there in the writers room of the progressive insurance commercial uh, writers room. Fuck you guys. I want to take I want to take Flo from Progressive, and I want to I want to tie her up, and I want to put her in an inch and a half deep of water. <laughs> And I want to just press on her head over and over again. <laughs> Save more with... <laughs> Save more with what? Save more with... <laughs> and then I want to... I want to take the gecko from Geico. And I want to just turn his heat lamp off. <laughs> In a 64 degree apartment. Hey, you can save more by switching up. Golly, it's cold. <laughs> it's quite cold. Yeah, it's going to be. I'm going to the gym. <laughs> I'll be gone for a couple of hours, buddy. Good luck. You would do that to this poor little guy. Yeah, dude. I'd shoot, I'd shoot him in the head with a BB gun. <laughs> I just Insurance is so expensive. Why do they have all these stupid mascots? Just make the fucking insurance cheap and make the repairs good. Stop stealing so much goddamn money. But look at his little walking stick. Yeah, dude, I'm shoving it up his ass and putting him on a campfire and eating him <laughs> like a Filipino jungle man. Fuck these motherfuckers, dude. Gecko, gecko, he's so cool. You yeah, he like tastes him? great. <laughs> Stupid ass insurance companies. <laughs> I hate car insurance so much. No, because I lived in Virginia for so long and I racked up like... Eight reckless driving tickets because, like you said, the speed limits are 55 on the freeway. It's a scam. And it is it is a scam, and it's a racket. And I'm going to say this. When I'm in a, when I'm selling out Madison Square Garden, I'm gonna, I'm still going to be – I'm going to do insurance jokes. I'm going to start tackling, like, when I get to, like – The issues sh- that if really I ever, matter. If I ever get to Joe Rogan level of, uh, of reach 
an influence, I'll just start targeting core systems that are broken. Nice. Like rackets. Like insurance, car insurance is a fucking racket. I shouldn't have to pay 200 a month. I fucking never get in wrecks. I've never gotten a fucking car wreck. I'm always... I'm always paying for speeding tickets. All my shit is, it's never a car wreck. It's a fucking speeding ticket. Last, like, right as I was leaving Virginia, I went to go pick up Chelsea one last time before I left. They got me one one more. Oh, one, one more. One, one, over, one over, going over 20. Like 80-something in a 65. No. Got me, dude. One last one. Uh, they say your insurance goes down on your 25th, 25th birthday. Guess what happened on my 25th birthday? Got one. Oh, bastard. They say you get one when you turn 30. Got one when I turn 30, dude. It's like well, I haven't like, gotten oh, a speeding ticket in years. But Ridley's the, birthday just passed. Oh, uh, it's, the, it's the time that Ridley would get a discount on his insurance. And all right, run speedingticket.exe. We'll run that through his simulation right quick. And <laughs> <laughs> looks like he goes up Williamson Avenue a lot. Yeah, we'll just, yeah, or whatever. So and so (laughs) Avenue. All right, we'll just generate a cop NPC right here. Boop. All right, make sure his dick is in his hand and his radar's in the other. Boop. Oh, yeah, fuck yeah, little Chinese boy. He just spawns. Yeah, I just spawn, (laughs) just fucking. Mr. Ridley, the fucking spy, the the agents from. (laughs) That's what getting a speeding ticket in Virginia feels like. It's like the agents from fucking. The Matrix. The Matrix, they just. You're just driving. You look over, and it's a Chinese lady, and then she's like, <laughs> she's start turning into a state trooper. She's just <laughs> fucking hat just morphs on her head. Her her O3 Camry turns into a fucking Crown Victoria. <laughs> just these makes guys. no fucking sense. These guys. <laughs> yeah, but a cop. <laughs> He's just a cop. He's <laughs> Mr. Ridley. Do you know how fast you were going? No, I don't. Why don't you tell me? Because I'm not going to snitch on myself. They always try to get you to snitch on yourself. The first, the first sentence out of your mind, out of, out of your mouth, is you snitching on yourself. They're, they're just the skeeviest. And then there's just homeless people stealing shit everywhere, and there's people getting hurt and shit. But so much crime everywhere else. So much real cop shit you should be doing. Oh yeah, that's but you're the just same collecting way. money for the state like a fucking pussy. Yeah. And I don't think, like, dude, if that was. I would be so ashamed if if you jo- join the police force to be like, yo, I want to, you know, help my community and all that. And then they indoctrinate you with this is how you can help by pulling people over and collecting money for the state. It's like, no, dude. Yeah, I always thought about that with the guys that write parking tickets. Like, why not be a hero and just never? Yeah, I didn't see anybody who parked incorrectly today. They're like, what the fuck? You've never, you worked here for eight months and you've never written a parking ticket. Yeah, because that person's actually, it, as in real life. <laughs> yeah, yeah. He's the actually meme in real life. Fuck yeah. you. Oh, yeah, yeah. Uh, parking ticket people, too, they can get the smoke. I've walked. I've been walking downtown, and I've like looked at them and be like, "You guys ever think about getting a real fucking job?" Like I've said that to them. Like I harass them. If, hey, if you're in downtown Austin, and you see somebody writing a ticket, <laughs> just just call them a fucking dumbass. <laughs> be like, "Hey, dumbass, nice vest, dumbass." <laughs> a fucking bright yellow vest. <laughs> yeah, that guy. It's always that guy too. It's always like a black dude with glasses. <laughs> actually, actually, uh. It says Monday through Friday, five to five p.m. to twelve a.m. And it's uh, it's Saturday, so I'm just doing my job. That's why we had to tow you. And that'll be an additional five hundred dollars. It's like the dudes. The God kid. forbid you go to downtown Austin to stimulate the economy. I'm just, you know, I'm just contributing to the local economy. Why the fuck? Nice vest, homo. <laughs> cool notebook, fag. <laughs> is this like an Indian guy? <laughs> it is. Oh, man. They're uh, so diverse. Pro tip, take an old ticket that you've already gotten and put it in your windshield whenever you don't feel like parking so it looks like you already have a parking ticket because these are surface-level human beings. They're not going to touch the parking ticket on your windshield wiper. They're just going to assume somebody else did their job already. Whatever they consider a profession snitching on you because your car was in a place for too long. Who ends up doing those, te- those like, 
those kind of hall monitor ass jobs when they get older like powerless like, retards like what happened what's your origin story you for were that a job? powerless retard as a kid <laughs> and then you found a way to have a little shred of power and it's not like i can't afford it but it's like i've easily spent 400 500 since i've lived here in a year but it's all good They'll tow your car like nothing out here. Too. Oh, yeah. Chelsea's car. I've had Chelsea's car and it almost got towed. And I caught it. I walked outside. I was parked somewhere. It was like, that's the thing with Austin. You go park somewhere. The sign says you pay to park. And you're like, yeah, cool. I'll just get a $20 ticket. And then you walk back out there and somebody has changed the sign. <laughs> yeah. They do that here. Yeah, they actually they go that. out here and they zip tie a new sign on the pre-existing sign. It's the the biggest pile of horse shit I've ever seen. I've never seen a city do that. Especially in South by, they go down and like go in all my normal spots where I usually park downtown, and they're like, some dickheads like hit you with the, actually, this is for artist parking now. None of these, none of these yuppies playing banjo have a car. <laughs> they all, they all rode an e bike here. It's so this indie rock dude from Nebraska can park here. So what fuck you, you, Jean Jacket Foxtrot. Go back to Kansas. <laughs> Whatever the fuck their indie band names, yeah. Jean Jacket Foxtrot. I saw so many of those this week. Dude, yeah. The boots. Dude. Wearing the, the, the Clarks with the fucking ankle showing. The Clarks boots with the ankle showing and a Jean Jacket <laughs> that's all tattered. Clarks, what are Clarks? Look them up. Clarks boots. You'll laugh because you'll know. You know this guy. Oh, I probably know a lot of them. Yeah, they look like they look like every artsy dude that's that buys stuff at Forever Twenty One. <laughs> yeah, if you if you play a string instrument and you wear these, kill yourself. <laughs> look, that's the style. Exactly, right there, just like that. Everybody who, <laughs> bro, if that's what, oh, that's your that's your pussy strat. That's your is that is that the meta for where you're from, dude? Ladies, come on. Oh. Bar barcode bang bitches. That's yeah. That's who he's getting. He's getting all the barcode bang. Yeah. Orange hair, barcode bang, thick rim glasses, blue hair, whatever color it is. Hairy armpits. Uh, booty hole as hairy as their armpits. Haven't haven't washed in weeks. pH balance all fucked up. That's what you're. That's the kind of pussy you're getting with that fit, buddy. Good God. They kind of need someone for each other though, dude. You know, <laughs> look at this—the one you just described. Whoa! <laughs> Whoa! I just yeah. AI generated that with Google <laughs> Images. Yeah, you did, dude. And it's funny because they—it's almost like they're perfect for each other. Like they need—they need each other. These guys. <laughs> the hard cut to just the boots. Yeah, these guys. She brings home just girls. the legs. She's just like, all right, so we're dating, and it's just yeah. Clark's boots and jeans. It's like the parents from Cow and Chicken or whatever. Yeah, pretty much. Sorry, that was an obscure reference. No, I remember it completely. They're right. just legs. Yeah. For people that don't it's know. It's legs and a voice. Up. Legs accompanied by a voice. I'm glad I'm not the yeah, only I one. Just that don't, I just that. think that we should free Palestine. Anyways, here's my cover of fucking Lick My Dad's Cock when I was 12. <laughs> this image right here, dude. Yeah. Wait. Actually, we do need to give money to Ukraine. <laughs> There's something happening here, dude. Is that just what yeah. happens when you when you get older? It turns into kind of like loafers, like a reed look. Yeah, fucking reeds, loafers, dude. <laughs> Fuck reed. Yeah. People, That's our buddy reed doesn't know, don't know. You guys don't. You guys don't deserve to know who reed is. Reed's an unemployed piece of shit. That's all you need to know. <laughs> Reed, if you're listening to this, which you probably aren't because you're a fake friend, you're a piece of shit and you need to get a job. And let's get lunch soon, buddy. I miss you. <laughs> let me uh, let me train your girlfriend's dog. <clears throat> you are the dog whisperer. It's pretty impressive. It's crazy how good I am with dogs. You're like Caesar Milan, Asian Caesar Milan. <sighs> so, I, I habilitate. Dogs, I train people. Just say, oh, your dog not going to listen? Just say you're going to eat him. <laughs> oh, just point to the oven. Every time your dog 
do bad. Go, oh, I cook you. <laughs> grab a fork. Yeah, grab a grab a knife and a fork for this badass dog. <laughs> B A D. Writing a new song. <laughs> grab a knife and a fork for that badass dog. <laughs> it's a, it's an Asian dog eating wet ass pussy parody. Yeah, that's that's, that's, that's a, a that's, that's a, a crazy that's a riff. reach. That's a reach. <laughs> 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 B A D, badass dogs. Yeah, I have no patience for bad dogs, man. Yeah, if you got a bad pet, dude, having a bad dog is such. That, that dog's not even that bad. It just Mm-mm. that dog's a sweetheart. It just wasn't. I already. I like. Sub, I deduced what was wrong with that dog. I was like, this girl didn't socialize this dog enough. She doesn't take it out on walks enough, and uh, she spent too much time with it. And now it gets separation anxiety the moment she's not around. And so then she, you got all Doctor Ridley, and you're like, and. Let me check something. And you kind of grabbed his nose and put it up to the light. Yeah, his eyes are looking a little cloudy there. He's probably losing a little sight, too. It's probably freaking him out. Yeah, because my dog's losing yeah, his sight, yeah, and I was just repeating him. what the vet said. <laughs> it sounded like you fucking... I had no idea. I just, like, saw his eyes were cloudy. I was like, yeah, he's going blind, too. He's got really bad cataracts. Yeah. It's probably freaking him out, too. Yeah. I was so confident of the way I said it. Yeah, that I just yeah. was like, my Ridley... Dr. Ridley. Just the... give... Oh, yeah, uh, perfectly perfectly healthy dogs coming into my vet office. I'm like, yeah, he's uh, pretty sick. We're going to have to put him down. I don't think you guys need to see this. I'm just going to take him into the back room. And they go into the back room, and it's a Chinese restaurant on the opposite side of the building. I'm just like, all right, got a new one for you. <laughs> it's just a scam. It's just running a scam for years. It's like a veterinary clinic connected to a Chinese Yo, restaurant. how many of those are in the Chinatown? You can probably though? look it up at Google Maps. It's just vet. Yeah, if you go to Chinatown and there's a vet and a Chinese restaurant connected by a wall, and it's the same guy. It's just a revolving door. It's just fucking number one Chinese restaurant, and then on the other side, it's number one Chinese vet office. Number <laughs> It's the same font and everything. I'm going to see if it exists. <coughs> Chinese restaurant near next to you, vet clinic. <laughs> yeah, it's just Hans Walk and Cat Clinic in dude, the same look, font. This is the thing, dude. Whoa, I called it. No, dude. China King next to what? <laughs> the animals. Look at the meme. It's the dog. <laughs> the, the pimple's like. Mm. <laughs> Animal Hospital next to China. China Chef. <laughs> dog does not like that, dude. That's crazy. That's what Look, there's another one. That that that's probably happening somewhere in the country. Not even being racist. <laughs> that's crazy that a quick Google search. <laughs> Dude, there's like twenty of and them. And that's how I picture it. It's like in a strip mall, like a <laughs> shopping center strip mall, and that just happened to be how the leases ended up. There's just like, a window in the back. Yeah, it's like the same dude. It's just <laughs> You go into the restaurant. I'm wearing like a, I'm wearing like the little restaurant hat, and then you go into the veterinary clinic, and now it's me like wearing a, a lab suit. <laughs> I'm just like, hey, what's up? And there's a revolving door for each behind the counter of each building. Oh shit! That's funny as shit, dude. Asian cuisine next to cat care clinic. Yeah, that's that's just you know. I love the Google search. Just proved my riff right. Your riff correct, dude. Look, there's yet another one, dude. That that is crazy. How many instances that is? That looks like the same fucking business, dude. Yeah, there's like no wall. Are you hungry or is your dog sick? Either way, we're gonna find a solution. (laughs) You can take the red pill, or you can take the blue pill, and flip a coin. You can take your dog to the vet, or you can donate it to the Chinese people next door. Either way, we're taking your dog. One door closes, another opens. Yeah, if all dogs go to heaven, I mean, I mean, they all go to heaven, right? And by heaven, I mean the Chinese restaurant next door. Should we talk a little bit about how the pod uh, told the future a little bit? You were talking about that earlier. Oh, yeah. Uh, last episode, we talked about Jackie Chan, and we talked about Chris Tucker. If you go to Chris Tucker's Instagram, Jackie visited him on tour, and they take a picture together, and they're both holding up the numbers four and uh, Chris Tucker's Instagram yep I think he yep right there boom I want to thank my brother from another mother Jackie Chan for the 
for the bouquet of flowers that he sent me last night at my show at the Fox Theater in Atlanta, Georgia. I love you, Jackie! <laughs> Holding that number four, dude. You know what that means. Bro, that's crazy. Chris Tucker looks younger. He looks young again when he's standing next to Jackie. <laughs> that's crazy how that works. They it's- both kind of look the same, honestly. Like yeah, the they don't look they like look they, they don't look like they've aged, but when they're photographed separately, they look shitty. It's the adrenochrome. So, so when they're next to each other, like they're that energy, they just like bring back that youthful rush mm-hmm. hour four energy. Man, dude, we manifested rush hour four. Yeah, it's all because of us. That would be cool if I put it that out. That was like ether. last week. I've been listening to that Rick Rubin book, and um. He says that all art, if somebody does something that's yours already, like they didn't steal it from you. It's just the art was there and it was time. It was it's time for it to exist. I noticed this with uh, there's some I just found out about this guy. Everybody's been sending me his videos. He did the he did. He does gay versions of songs. And I, people started, after I started making this podcast, people have been sending me videos of this guy who makes, um, is that the gay slipknot song It's guy? some, yeah, yeah, the gay slipknot guy, some black guy on Instagram, some BG. He does all the gay versions of songs. And he did the slipknot, I push my fingers into my ass. We were literally doing that in the car. We were doing that in the car, like fucking before that video, ago. way before that. Yeah. So it's like, to me, it's like listening to that book adds validity to that where it's like oh shit maybe you know maybe sh- we're just all tapped into this thing mm-hmm. of art and creativity and then you know it may have been your idea or you have done it but you know it's maybe it's now it's time it's that time for that person to be the one who showcases it mm-hmm. so i mean i don't i wouldn't consider it stealing i just think that everybody who's artistic and creative is kind of thinking in this weird hive mind and we're not all connected but we are connected to it and when the fruit is ripe, somebody's gonna pick it. Somebody's gonna pick it, and then they're just gonna show it. It's like it. a riff tree. It is. It's like the 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 universal riff or the universal the universe of creativity, the universe of art, and everyone who creates art is basically tapped into this thing, and they have antennas that you know. That's I've I've just got these riff antennas, yeah. and I pick up on the riffs, <clears throat> and there's somebody else thinking of that same riff, and it's just you it's know two of, dudes fountain of riffs, two dudes like plucking riffs and showing them. And you know he's he's got more of an audience, so people would say that I took it from him. Mm-hmm. But the reality is, is we were just just riff boys out there riffing, just riffing, creative into people. The ethos, the yeah, 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 and that's fine. But it, there is a difference in comedy where you're watching people and you're stealing their shit. That's completely different than that. Yeah, because there is like hive mind where it's like, oh, so and so has a joke like that. Well, I've never seen it. You know how many people I've seen tell a inside people versus outside people homeless joke? I've seen like six different comics do a like joke like that. Inside dogs, kind of, or. Out, uh, homeless people are just outside. What happens if we just put them inside? They were oh, inside yeah. people at one point. Like everybody has that, and that just kind of like like nobody own nobody <clears throat> has put just it like on a simulation theory jokes. Everyone's yeah. writing jokes about simulation. Th- so the ethos and the and the ethos and the meta and and what's you know current that's going to change. People aren't talking about airplanes anymore. Yeah, airplanes aren't like a new thing. Airplanes tacky to talk about them. Like yeah, like so we're all trying to jokes. discover like these new, these new sub uh, new subject matter. We're all just finding new subject matter, and and there's new ways you could have your own. Everyone can have a so and so joke, or have a uh, this topic joke, or that. Topics of jokes are going to exist, right? But like, it really depends on what's the way you see it and how you interpret it. So I wouldn't call things. What I would consider hacky is kind of like the first level of every topic. You, you got to dig a little deeper. Dig deeper. <clears throat> or, you know, go against what everyone else is thinking. Mm-hmm. Do the opposite of what people expect from that kind of material. That's why it's like when I talk about being Asian on stage, I don't talk about how hard it is being Asian or how I get treated poorly because of, you know what I mean? I don't victimize myself or anything. I just play with it. I make fun of it. I make fun of that becoming being a victim of racist shit. Like my angle of whenever I talk about race, I, I kind of like play on that. Like you kind of take power away from it when you're like being a victim of racism is kind of gay. And that doesn't apply to me yeah. because I don't allow it to. And then I, I make fun of myself. It's fun. 
it's fun to subvert expectations. Well, it's fun <clears throat> too because you're ha- you you you're half you're half of of, of a race, but you also you get look one, full. You look uh, yeah. Full I'm half even. of a race, but I get 100 percent of the racism, yeah. which in itself is funny. Because like when people are racist to me, no one's ever crediting my white side. But when I'm saying I'm Asian, people will bring up that I'm half white. Or when I say I'm half white, people are like, N- "You don't even. Why right. are you bringing that up? You know what I mean? It's funny." And like if like somebody like Louis C.K. is a perfect example of somebody who got the opposite. Like, because he's half Mexican and he looks like a redheaded white guy. He looks like a, he's, a ginger. He, he looks no, not a, not a <coughs> single drop. Louis C.K. <laughs> Louis, the fact that Louis C.K. is half Mexican is so funny. <laughs> yeah, it is. He also wrote Pootie Tang. Did you know that? <laughs> no, that's awesome. <laughs> Louis C.K. wrote Pootie Tang, so he's, he's full black in my opinion. <laughs> Asian Louis C.K., dude. A- he was half Asian. I'm Louis C.K. Ah. Uh, Hero, I'm Rui CK. You gonna watch me touch my penis? Hey, Rady, you stay in the room. You watch me touch on my penis. <laughs> you can't reef. You have to watch me finish. To- Why are you talking like that? Because he doesn't look. He doesn't look. Yeah, that- it's just Rui CK doing an Asian be, voice. It'd be funny to riff on, <laughs> like what other races he could be, since you can't tell that he's half Mexican, so yeah, he yeah, could be yeah. half black too. He could be Jewy CK. Jewy He'd be like, yeah, what's going on? <laughs> I, he does kind of look Jewish. Yeah, he could. if he changed his hair to is he if, not? Is he not? Is he maybe? That's no, Louis white? Louis C.K. is not Jewish. He's Mexican, so he's Christian. Oh, <laughs> you can't be a half Mexican Jew. Like if your dad, if your dad's Jewish, your mom would have to be Jewish. Oh, okay, right. Yeah, then you'd be Mewish, Mexuish. It's got to exist. Mexican Jews. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mexican Jews is a funny concept. But yeah, we for sure uh manifested this before I take it away. We for sure manifested uh Christmas. That's wild that uh yeah, it's wild that we even like kind of we were talking about Jack. I was just thinking about Rush Hour 4. Mm-hmm. I was just thinking about Why it. Why not? Like, I was like where the hell is it? Where the hell is it? We need something to, you know, Rush Hour is something that just transcends race. Rush Hour brings the people together, dude. <laughs> There's something about a black guy that acts like a pussy and an Asian guy that's a dumbass being wacky and whooping ass and taking names. It just makes people happy Mm -hmm. because they're subverting the expectations. They're subverting. Like, a black guy is supposed to be tough. He's supposed to be brave. Chris is fucking terrified that whole movie. And then Jackie is also terrified, but he's whooping ass and he's empowering Chris and they're getting through it. It's true. Here's a half Mexican Jew. Ew, Turk, take that off the screen, <laughs> dude. What is it, Mario Lopez? <laughs> Good God. Is it Mario Lopez with too much fucking Botox? They do exist. Jesus Christ. <laughs> well, this was a little chill one, dude. It was chill, dude. Hope you guys enjoyed it. I got like three shows tonight, man. You're going to crush, dude. Um, Energy's good. We had a fun pod. Yeah, we're good. Thank you guys for listening. Shirts are $25 on uh, <laughs> Michael Ridley. Bigcartel.com. Don't know how I'm going to put that on my taxes. Don't know. I don't know how to do taxes. Yeah, yeah. As a loss. Yeah, just yeah. I'm just going to put it in as a loss. Hey, man, you live and you learn. I made that first. Uh, I made a good chunk on the first flip, and then I was like, oh, everybody. Here's the thing, man. People don't understand this about making shirts with pre-orders and stuff. I was like, you know what? Enough people are DMing me. I don't need to do another pre-order. I ordered 50 more shirts when I only needed eight more. <gasps> Shout out to everybody who said they were going to buy one and then b- didn't buy one. Shout out, dude. Shout out to everyone who did buy one, and I f- made that first initial chunk of profit, and then I took that profit, reinvested it to get more shirts so I could keep buying more equipment to self-automate and make the shirt and merch process like totally independent. I was trying to build that up, and then, boom, got knocked down. I get knocked down. I get knocked down and I get up again and my apartment's full of t-shirts with my face on it. I get knocked down and I get up again and my wife's about to leave my ass. I get knocked down. There's 500 t-shirts just sitting in my fucking house. I get knocked down. I get jerked off again and you're never going to jerk me off. Dude, you're like uh, you're like hmm. uh, Kenny Powers when he has all that merch that he can't sell. 
Dude. You remember that, dude? Yes. <laughs> Let me see if I can find that fucking... Oh, shit. But, yeah. Yeah. Well, that was a chill one. Yeah, michaelridley.bigcartel.com. Hopefully we can get the rest of these sold and I can do stickers next time. Oh, Everybody yeah. loves a sticker. I think we're going to go back to square one with the merch and just do stickers. I knew you guys were excited about the cock rings. I got a bunch of emails about, oh, when's the cock ring dropping? When's the cock ring? I was like, dude, that was a joke. I'm not seriously making chinky sweat cock rings. I also stopped replying to that Chinese supplier on WhatsApp, so he's <laughs> never going to get his money. Oh, yeah, but email us stuff. Yeah, please. We still haven't gotten any emails from you guys. Uh, again, that was uh, Radio Ridley Radio at gmail.com. Email me anything. Email me a question. If you want life advice, email me, uh, you know, am I the assholes? I'm, I'm good at those. You know, send me a, am I the asshole? And then explain why, if you're the asshole or not. Or, you know, uh, send me somebody you want me to call on the podcast. Yeah, prank if, calls. Prank calls. Awesome. Yeah, prank calls would rule. We'll Just, call your work. Yeah, I'll we'll call, call your mom. I'll call your mom. Call your work. We'll, uh, you know, get some candles in here. We'll call your dead grandma. And tell her to get you a switch for Christmas. <laughs> you know what I mean? It's just that's just the rules. Uh, I think I had a good time. We uh, we did the Fast and Furious Mario Kart. That was funny. Mario Kart Dad too. Mario Kart Dad was funny as fuck. I was gonna tag your you're like your grandma will get you a switch for Christmas because we're a fucking Mario Kart house. <laughs> <laughs> I only raise winners. Oh oh, you don't want to play Mario Kart? Go sit in the corner and play Animal Crossing with your sister like a fucking pussy. You want to be a goddamn champion, Trent? <laughs> Guys, thank you for listening to Radio Ridley Radio. That was episode 18. I love you. Bye-bye. Bye. Radio Ridley Radio. No pussy ass shit allowed.